um, works and partners with us. So recognize our staff as well and thank them for the work they do in uh, making things happen from day to day. So next, I want to give an update on where we're at in the board replenishment. Is there a question in the back? Great question. <laughs> a couple of them are milling about, but several in the back. So we have Pastor Ben um, as our pastor. We have Dan Haupt as our director of operations. He's hanging out in the back there. Um, Lori Ross, our worship leader up front. Uh, Dan Egum leading family ministry. And I, there he is. Um, and Tito Abar running communications for us. So next I wanted to give an update on our board replenishment process. Uh, we've been talking with you since the fall about where we were at with the Alley Board and over time since even prior to our pastor transition had had members that had moved into other roles as we sent Remedy Church, um, as we sent folks into other areas of service. And so we had been in a period for quite some time of um, just in a holding pattern and we intentionally left it that way through a pastor transition, but then acknowledge that as we continue to change and grow and as we ask our board in their leadership role to step up and be actively engaged in um, both their walk and discipleship, but also in um, partnering with our elders, our staff, our pastor, um, and leading our church through the season, we've been wanting to expand and replenish some of those members. Um, and we did that through a nomination process, which you guys participated in. Um, again, we want to be a board that is not self-selecting. Um, we want to be a board that represents the demographics and uh, face of our church family. So we had a period of nomination that was open in which we received multiple nominations. In the interest of then continuing to talk through that and be uh, open and transparent about the process, we used the elders to partner with us to give input and provide feedback on candidates and, and uh, help us move forward, seeking first folks that are biblically focused, active in the church family, aligned with our overall church mission, who can also choose and actively step into the time and commitment it takes to lead the church body. Um, that led to pastor and board member conversations. So we wanted to ensure that as we moved forward, if we um, indicated that folks were um, interested in joining the board, that they knew what they were getting into um, and that they knew what that meant. Um, and that we had just good conversation about what, what does it mean? What are we asking you to do? Um, what is the role that you will play? Um, and in doing that, extended and had offers accepted by several folks. So Christina Phillips, Alex Tracy, Bill Wallace, Candy Westland, and Jeremy Wright are all officially joining us as of this January 2019 timeframe. Um, yeah. So a couple of those folks have joined us for a meeting. A couple will be just joining us um, for their first meeting in the upcoming. Um, but I do just want to express a couple minutes in just talking about that process. There were a lot of really rich conversations that came out of that um, and a lot of evidence of God's work in providing us people who are interested and passionate about the work our church is doing and, um, and the things that we're focused on. So a lot of prayerful consideration both on the side of folks who accepted our invitation and on the side of folks who said, thank you for thinking of me. I'm serving in these areas, and this is where I am best fit. Um, so good conversations all around. Um, I can see God's hand in that process, and I'm very thankful um, that he's giving us a refreshed set of folks to join our existing board members. So I will pause there. We actually use our annual meeting to have the church family affirm and approve our board member additions. So I'll pause there and ask first if there are any questions or comments about the process. So the question is how long are the terms? This is the alley, we work a little bit loosely there. Um, so we don't have an official set of term limits. Um, that's actually one of the things that has um, been part of our discussion. And so we do wanna put a little bit of framework around that. What we ask for is for folks to be able to serve for a couple, for two years, 
when they join us um, because it's hard to have people hop in, hop off. Um, but we also want to acknowledge health and change and leadership over time, a collective flow in the leadership process. Um, and so we see that as healthy as well. Hey, Dan. So we did have everybody stand, but how about our new board members have take, take uh, stand up right now and we'll officially. <laughs> so this is our first order of business that we'll take a vote on today. There are two. Um, could I get a, a a motion, please, to approve the new members to our board. Second? Second from the back. Um, all approved, say aye. All opposed, nay. Okay, so affirmed. So we, we officially welcome, as voted and approved, <laughs> board members. And we're very thankful to have them, so thank you. <laughs> I promise no speaking parts for them today, so if you all want to hold them to a different standard, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that to the crowd. <laughs> thank you. You can go ahead and go to the next slide. And for our financial results summary from 2018 and our 2019 plan, I'll welcome Dave Lecce. Good morning, everyone. Um, how many people were here? Raise your hand if you were here uh, Thanksgiving weekend where we kind of gave our last financial update. Quite a few. That's great. So, this, so a lot of this story will be familiar. We were talking in the lobby how this is a little bit of a we're resolving the cliffhanger um, of, you know, how did things turn out? So if, if we uh, advance the slide by one here, please. Um, just a, a little overview. We've got a, a pretty – oh, and here's a uh, – these are – paper copies of what you're about to see. So if this is hard to read on the screen. I acknowledge that. Um, anyway, the first page that you're going to get in, in the packet that's coming around uh, is just a, a, a we have got a pretty simple expense structure here. It's principally com comprising of our staff running the building um, and support of missions, and then everything else is sort of that bottom category, 9%. And this is based on 2018. Um, actual numbers. So, um, you know, you can see we don't have a lot of what I'd call discretionary spending. The majority of our spending is sort of, it, you know, in these basic categories. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. As we went through 2018, and especially as we got into the fourth quarter of 2018, we've all seen how the, 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 the church body here has changed over the, the, the year 2018. And we saw a, a, a change in giving. Oh, here's a little more detail on that. Sorry about that. Um, next, hit to the next one. Um, and uh, oh my gosh, well that's. Did you, did you, if you brought, you didn't bring your microscope, you might want to look at the at the piece of paper. Or telescope, yeah, that's better. Um, anyway, we 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 kind of left it. Uh, we saw a, a significant decline in the rate of giving in the fourth quarter of 2018, and we and we saw um, that that was a trend that we thought was going to be uh, continuing. And we saw that um, we were going to result in a net deficit financial outcome. And you know we're not the United States federal government. If we have a deficit, we can't just sort of ride that out. We, we have to manage to our own um, uh, financial house. We got to keep good financial order here. So um, you can see where we wound up coming in. At, at the Thanksgiving meeting, we were predicting about a you know, forty to fifty thousand dollar net negative outcome for the year. We came in about forty two thousand. So the church responded in de in December with with strong giving. That's good. We came out better than we were thinking we might in the end of twenty eighteen. Um, but it also caused us to really take pause when we were planning for twenty nineteen. Um, hit the next slide here. So um, what happened in in twenty eighteen? The offering income for the year came in below budget, and our budget had planned for 
the, the possibility of a negative outcome. We've done that before. We now have realized you know, with kind of the new normal, we're not going to do that again. And so, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, our, our missions giving, you can see there, we have significant support of Remedy Church. And, and that is a scheduled commitment that will, uh, that's scheduled to end halfway through this coming year. Um, and everything else was almost right on plan, our spending. So this was, this financial situation was all giving related. It was all the top line and not the expenses or anything like that. So um, next slide, please. Next page in your packet. This is just an illustration of offerings by month. Uh, during the course of the year, our, our year is lumpy, and giving is I income is lumpy. Our expenses are pretty static, so we need to s we need to plan for that. And in fact, during the course of the year, um, you could say as a rule of thumb, you know, we 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 were comfortably averaging above this thirty thousand dollars a month level until the fourth quarter, September October. October is the month where we sa said, uh oh, we've got a new trend here. And when we looked at um, people who are no longer with the alley and no longer giving and, and, and the trend there, we realized we needed to, to take action. We had our meeting in, in uh, uh, November, and then December is traditionally a strong month where people sometimes back end their, their giving for the year. Um, so uh, this is just to illustrate how that looks every month of the year. Next slide, please. Next page. So um, when, we, when we were trying to guess... Notice the word, the use of the word guess, what our giving would be for 2019. We don't know. We, we, we tried to predict out and project the trends that we were seeing in the late part of 2018. And, and so we've estimated in a range of three hundred to $330,000 of giving for the year total. And that compares to an, an actual, um, for 2018, significant reduction. And we, we don't know what the future is going to bring, of course. God's going to provide, and he knows. But what we do know is we want to plan for a break-even budget for the year. So when we look at we're going to have reduced giving, we see that, um, and we're, we're planning for that. We don't, you know, we don't know what it's going to be. But we also aren't going to plan for a, a deficit budget. So the two of those together result in the need to um, adjust the expense structure of the church at the same time the revenue. So um, if we go to the next page again here. Thanks. Um, so when you see, in, in fact, that again, I'll call out some of the things that you'll see on your printed page. An uh, offering reduction of about a $100,000 assumption um, and an elimination of a $40,000 deficit. Together, that adds up to a total reduction of the expense structure of about $148,000 last year to this year. And how are we going to get there? How, how, what, how is the planned budget going to get there? So the next slide talks a little bit about that. Where did we come up with $148,000 of savings in this church um, with the plan? Well, you can see the various categories here. Personnel. Um, we've scaled back our staff. We had uh, Patty Oman, who, who uh, is, is moving on to other opportunities, and we're electing to not replace that position. Um, we've dialed down the hours that we're going to be consuming from some of the other staff and made some changes there. Significant reduction there. Um, missions, and this is one we should talk about. One of, the, one of the things we heard loud and clear from the church family at the November meeting was, um, if we're in this financial bind, how can we adjust, and, and that's an area where we can support our own staff reduce the need to cut staff even more by adjusting our support for other third-party entities. This is a change of philosophy, and I want to uh, make sure everyone understands that. What we'd like to anticipate is that this is a one-year break. Um, we're going to continue to support Remedy Church because we made a commitment there, and we're going to support our teen mission trip that's coming up this fall, but all our other third-party missions funding um, has been adjusted to zero in 2019. And that's, th th that's a significant change in our expense structure that, again, we heard that voice from the congregation 
and uh, and so the board reacted to that and, and made that change. So make sure that, that we understand that, and, and we'll talk about that as the year goes on, and we'll say a little bit more about that. Um, the other the other key things that we found are um, Dan Haupt went and renegotiated our mortgage, which is great, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the, the, the building debt in a couple more pages. Um, and then we went through the entire expense structure and found lots of little things that we could decide were nice to haves rather than need to haves, and we cut those out. Even things like uh, the coffee bar downstairs, you know, we, we took that out of the budget. So please start paying for your coffee down there. Um, and and it's, it's things like that. We really did scrub this entire stru uh, expense structure to get down to the bare minimum so we can continue to pay our staff what they deserve and need and is right. And, you know, we have to pay the heat bill and the electric bill and things for the building, too. Those are really kind of non-negotiables. Everything else, we treated as negotiables and, and came up with this, uh, this revised budget. The, the interesting thing to think about is the, uh, uh, we've got a lot of new people at the alley, but we also have a lot of people who've been around here for a while. And the, the size and scope of this budget is essentially about the same as where we were in 2015 and 2016. So this is, you, we've been there. We've been a lot smaller than this in the past, too. So uh, this is not a, uh, oh, oh no, you know, woe is us. This is just an adjustment and kind of a little bit of a reset. And then we'll, we'll kind of see how this year plays out. Next, next page, please. So what if, what if we wind up uh, with more coming in that offering box that, uh, that Ben talked about? You know, what would we do? Well, um, we, we're going to see how the year plays out. We've budgeted very conservatively, as you saw. But if, if, uh, if giving runs greater than that conservative plan, we could restore missions support and restore uh, funding for third-party mission organizations that we've, that we've been paying in the past. Uh, we could divert it to a more aggressive uh, payoff or reduction of our mortgage. We'll talk about that next. Um, we could uh, uh, look at restoring the coffee downstairs or, or other things like that. So, or we can, we can bolster our uh, rainy day fund. So uh, you know, the board will be attentively watching trends and, and managing so that we do not have a deficit in, in 2019. But if uh, we also don't really want to have a surplus either. We want to we want to manage our our spending to the level of our income, just like any family, and and so we'll keep everyone posted as the year plays out. So next slide, please. Kind of going. Oh, okay. Um, on our debt, when we bought this building uh, almost seven years ago, six six or so years ago, um, we took on some debt, and. Since then, we've paid down that debt through a combination of our regular monthly mortgage payments, just like everyone has at home. Um, but also, there have been a lot of dedicated gifts to that have been targeted specifically to debt reduction. And in fact, a lot more of that than our monthly payments. It's been over $450,000 of specially dedicated gifts to our mortgage. So our mortgage at the end of the year was, is down to $45,000. And that's compared to 130,000 at the end of 2017, and 170,000 at the end of the previous year. Um, so when we renegotiated this this reduced mortgage payment with our lender, um, we're comfortable with that because our debt is already down to a reasonably comfortable and achievable level. Our, keep in mind, our debt comes due a little over a year from now. So whatever is unpaid in May of 2020 comes due then. And so with our continued stream of monthly payments applied against the $45,000 balance that we have now, we project that we'll be down to about a $15,000 level when you factor in people who are making regular monthly dedicated pay down, uh, mortgage pay down uh, gifts as well. So we think that's, that's reasonable. And in fact, that's pretty close to paid off in the big picture. I mean, that's a lot of money, but in the big picture, we're, we're, we're pretty close. So um, if the year comes in with greater giving and or we have specifically targeted gifts for mortgage pay down, we could, we could get there pretty quickly. So that, that, that will probably be something that we'll also be attentive to and, and consider during the course of this, this year. So next page.
So, um, 2019, we're already near the end of January. Um, and so just be praying about this. You know, the board is really attentive to our financial results. Um, we want to be good stewards of what the, the church family has. Um, it comes from God. What you have comes from God, and, and we take that seriously, and, and we really are, um, are praying about this at, ev at every board meeting and, and all along. Um, be sensitive to the, the situation that this affects people. There are, there, are, there are admissions organizations. There are staff. There are um, um, real people who are affected by kind of a, a new financial um, reality this year. So be praying about that, too. And, and then let's be in unity, and, and we'll be very transparent as a board and keep the, the church family informed um, as the year plays out. We, we've got a lot that we're really excited about. We're going to make the most of what we have, and we're going we're gonna, to uh, take good care of that. So with that, any questions or, or comments? At, at the end of this section, we'll also kind of vote to approve as a church body um, this budget, our, our, our church budget for the coming year. Uh, the question is, the, the, the missions organizations that we're not funding, that we were funding in the past, have they been informed? And the answer is yes, um, they have been. And, you know, m the, the good thing is m most of them are not solely dependent on the alley for their only funding. And none of them were significant dollar amounts um, individually. They added up to um, a good-sized chunk, but it was nine different organizations so that, that was spread amongst. So I think the average, Dan, would be about four or $5,000 per organization that we were supporting um, times th those nine or so ballpark figures. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Anything else? Well, you c Pastor Ben couldn't have teed it up better. You know, the offering box is right back there. Um, and, and, you know, we, we talked about this in, in November, but, uh, you know, that the, 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 the preaching today was, was very relevant to this topic. Um, this isn't a plea for money. This is a plea for your heart and letting your heart uh, be that window into um, where you're at spiritually and just to, to remind us that that's an opportunity to extend our worship um, in that way, in a financial way, too. And uh, just pray for that and, and pray for how your own family and your own um, heart is led this year as this goes on. So um, if there's no other questions or, or comments, is, do we have a motion to approve this budget for the 2019 year for the alley? So moved. Second? Um, all in favor? Those opposed? Our budget's approved. Thank you. So one of the things we wanted to give today is an update from our daughter church, Remedy. Um, we invite, we have typically invited Andy to join us in person, and I know he would love to. He's preaching at the moment. Um, with a move to a little bit earlier meeting time, um, he's not able to join us in person. Um, but he did provide us a video, so we will um, let him speak to us himself. Morning, Alley Church. My name is Pastor Andy, and I am the pastor of your daughter church, Remedy, which is meeting right now in Oakdale, about 10 to 15 minutes north of here. And what I just realized is that you guys are helping me fulfill a dream I never knew I had. At this moment, I am appearing up front in front of two groups of people in two separate locations, which means I think I've finally made it big as one of those multi-site pastors who appear on screens and everything. So thank you guys so much. <laughs> but in all seriousness, thank you. Thank you so much. Your guys' time, your prayers, your energy, your money, your prayers, your prayers. Oh, they are so, uh, so, so needed. And we are so thankful for that. So we just wanted to give you an update on where those uh, time, that money, that energy, that prayer has gone uh, for your daughter church remedy in the year of 2018. So uh, just a couple celebrations that we've had over the last year. We had a baptism, uh, which happened to be my little baby boy, which I'm excited. We've had some affirmations of faith, which is excellent. Um, that's what we want and need. 
I've had the opportunity to do four first communions for families and students of those families, which is exciting. Uh, last year, we spent every Sunday going through the Gospel of Matthew. That was our teaching series. We said we were going to begin Matthew and that we were going to go until we were done. And uh, as of the last Sunday in December, uh, we made it through about 10 chapters of Matthew. So that tells you a little bit about the pace that we are going. But we've encountered some deep Bible teaching through that and some deep study of our Savior Jesus and his words and uh, what that means for us. And it's been uh, just life changing, blowing us away. Uh, we started our kids program. Actually, I should say we restarted our kids program and we decided to do a thing similar to you guys where we excused uh, during the message time. Um, and that has been incredibly helpful for us. We've seen um, our kids program go from my kids and uh, Stan, our worship leader's kids, to now about 15 to 20 kids who attend weekly, which is great. Um, another huge celebration that we have is this year, we finished our second uh, completed route of praying over every street in Oakdale. We did that one time before we launched, and then this year we completed it for the second time, which means, again, every home, every business, every school, every organization, that you can think of in the city limits of Oakdale has now been prayed for by us two times in a row. There's not one person from our city limits who walks in and hasn't been prayed for. I think that's amazing. Uh, another huge celebration this year of 2018, we increased our missions giving by $8,000. Uh, awesome. I love being a new church and being able to say right from the get-go, this is a priority that we're making and we're gonna give this to organizations in our area, give this to global organizations who are doing huge things for the gospel of Jesus. Um, and that's something that we took from you guys. So thank you again. Again, 2018, our average worship attendance, this will tell you something. We started, average worship attendance uh, started at about 38 this year. At the end, uh, by December 2018, our average worship attendance was about 62. So we almost doubled in size yet again. So uh, for us, uh, looking ahead to 2019, we have a baptism bash that we're getting ready to schedule uh, a couple families and their kids who are going to be baptized. Uh, and we're hoping for that this spring. We're going to rent out the pool at Skyview. Would love to see some of you at that. That'd be amazing. Um, always a fun time when we get to do that. Uh, another thing that we're debating, do we prayer walk Oakdale a third time? Or do we look at some of the other cities that are near us and do we decide, hey, we're going to start covering uh, this side of the cities in prayer? Uh, another thing, we have uh, submitted our constitution and bylaws, and we look forward in 2019 to becoming an official independent congregation. We're super excited about that. Um, not so much about all the policies that are going to go into <laughs> that process, but excited nonetheless. Uh, we are starting a new series, uh, taking a break from Matthew, and this year our Sunday teaching series is going to be The Story, where we go through the great story of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation and see what is the one consistent story that God is weaving through and challenging our people. Do you know the story of Scripture? And if you don't, you got to be there and you got to go through it because there is such depth and richness to knowing the story of God in the Bible. We are working towards financial independence this year. Um, most of our external funding will go away in this year of 2019. So uh, how are we doing on that? Are we, are we able to self-sustain? That's one big conversation and thing that we're going to be working towards um, this year. And then finally, we're starting to need more space and chairs. What do we do? We're going to develop a growth plan and assess those options there. Uh, do, we, do we rent out both gyms? Uh, do we just buy more chairs? Uh, do we look at some of the, the retail spaces that are in our city? What are some options that God is putting in front of us and what are we going to do there? So I pray uh, for you guys and for everything that's going on in the alley daily. I would ask that you would continue to lift us up in prayer. Uh, come by, see us every now and then. Our people love it when we see friendly faces and supportive faces from the alley. So please come visit us every now and then. And again, please continue to lift us up in prayer. Thank you guys for everything you do, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Peace, guys.
Andy's made the big time. We're glad for that. Uh, but no, really thankful to have an update. I would not have been able to res represent his updates as he did. And with that, I'll actually turn it over to our own Pastor Ben as we work through um, celebrating what God has done in 2018 and looking ahead to 2019. Awesome. Um, actually, I need my... Yeah. Thanks, babe. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, excited about um, what's happening at Remedy, and um, man, God is good, isn't he? Yeah. So uh, I'd love just to spend a few minutes doing some review for us and then uh, looking forward um, as well. And so the, the first thing I'd like to just show, just kind of ministry uh, overview uh, you can go to the next slide. Just that uh, we had, uh, let me see. You going to go to the next slide? Hello. Thank you. Thank you. So sip, uh, six baptisms and uh, renewals, one salvation, six new members, um, and then, of course, the transition with uh, our very own Patty. Um, but I just wanted to give you some of those highlights, um, just kind of overarching uh, ministry things that are happening. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. The next one is just uh, some of the outreach uh, missions that we've done. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Uh, we had a block uh, party, a backpack giveaway with 100, uh, about an estimated about 100 backpacks that were given away. Um, our ESL conversation group that um, is, is beginning that you've heard about. Also, uh, uh, we're helping out with a stone soup thrift shop. Um, and then Operation Christmas Child, we had about 200 boxes this year that we were able to send. Um, and that's always a good uh, time for us to gather. So, Also, um, our Alley teens made 200 or 2,000 sandwiches for Allen Law. Um, so that was another uh, awesome thing. Um, also, we were able to support um, Ben Kanger and Liberty uh, International trip that they took. Um, and also, the last one is just working with Faith City Church um, with uh, Carl Johnson, and I, he's here today, so I thought I'd give him a minute just to kind of share some updates on how some things are happening for them in 2019. So you want to come up, brother? All right, now open your Bibles to... <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, uh, over this past year, if some of you don't know, me and Melanie are covenant members of the alley. So we're not just visitors that's been visiting for a long time <laughs> and a guest preacher that's been preaching for a long time. So we serve you here in worship and in preaching. And that's one of the things that we would like to serve in more places, but there is a church plan. So uh, so we serve in that capacity. So I'm going to just go through the gamut of outreaches that you guys helped us with. Number one was our block party, which was highly successful with much rain. So we had eight salvations and two baptisms on that day. And we reached over 50 families, which means family doesn't mean like one person. It means like six when I started going through. So that outreach was amazing. The second thing we did was our Christmas outreach where we were able to give 100 toys to over, over 450 families, which was an amazing thing. And so we, no salvations then, but God, the gospel was preached to them. And then we did something that was, that was very awesome, is that we did our first pre-service, which in January, which we had 26 in attendance for our very first one. Yeah. So I feel really encouraged when I, Pastor Andy said they started with 38, so I feel really encouraged. <laughs> I feel super encouraged. But, but underneath that, there was a, a switch, uh, and thank the Pastor Ben, you're not the only ones that were challenged by it, okay? And so what we've done is we switched. So we have six disciple makers now who are making disciples. Actually, one of my elders is actually meeting two people today to make disciples. And then we got five people that we're discipling out of our own home who in the next couple of months are going to be making disciples themselves. And so <laughs> Faith City is off to a great start. We have two more Two more pre-services. The alley gifted us with some sound equipment, and somebody came and was like, is that yours? I said, yeah. <laughs> it's mine, brother. And then, and then through a generous gift, we got a, we got a minivan so that we could pick people up through, through relationships at the alley. We did a class here. 
with, with, eight, with, with eight adults called Care for the Poor who are now generating, like, their heart has changed for reaching the poor within the city, which has been an amazing transition and seen amazing lives uh, impacted by that teaching. So that's kind of all we've done, but we're not done. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to, uh, again, um, the way we support, uh, praise God, but I, I'm telling you, uh, coming from the inner city, I'm telling you, man, prayer for, for guys in the trenches like this is so powerful and needed. And so if we could just continue to pray for these brothers um, as the Lord is leading them. So I also wanted to mention uh, just a mission trip to Mexico that Mark Lundquist uh, helped out uh, to make that happen and be a part of that. So that was also uh, this year. We're also um, doing a missions highlight. And is Stacy here? Is, there she is. So we're, we're, we're making a little bit of a shift on how we um, highlight some of our missions. Um, and so I'm going to have her come forward and just share a little bit about what we're doing with that. <laughs> so I'm talking about missions and missions outreach and education, and we've severely curtailed our missions budget. And it seems kind of counterproductive in some ways. And yet, God is God. And God is not limited to the numbers that show up on a page. Oh, wait, it's my turn. Cry. Um, Pastor Ben and I have been talking about this actually since like last February or March. Um, and about what does our vision for missions look like? What is our passion for missions? How are we involved? What does it look like in our daily lives? There's been a lot of time and prayer um, on both of our parts, I know, put into bringing this forward to you guys. So this isn't just like a five minutes, once a month thing. This is bathed in prayer. Um, missions has been a passion of mine. I think Doug will get real sick of this. I've been called to pour into the overseas mission sharing the gospel to those who don't have access to it. The amazing thing that we have right here in the Twin Cities is that you have access, we have access to people within an hour drive of us that don't have access to the gospel because of their culture and their language, because of where they've come from, the Somali community in the Twin Cities is like 90% Muslim. Isn't that right? 99% Muslim. There is an amazing, an amazing outreach opportunity that we have just by being here and being willing to step outside of our comfort zone. You can call that whatever you want to call it. The fact of the matter is, is that we have a responsibility as people who know the truth to take the truth to people who don't have that responsibility. That's, that's who we are. That is the message that God has given every single one of us. Some of us are called to go overseas and live in other cultures. Some of us are called to step to our neighbor, to show up at the soup kitchen, to show up at the ESL class, where people are looking for a cheap way to learn English, and they're being taught English by someone who's a Christian. We have amazing, amazing opportunities to step up and meet God where he is. And when you think and you hear, oh, you know, just pray for me, there is no just about prayer. Prayer is everything. Like Andy said, your prayers, your prayers, your prayers. Prayer is a commitment that we give of our lives and ourselves to reach into and hold the rope for those who are out, who are doing, who can't do what we, who are doing what we can't do because of our schedules and our commitments and our things. But we can pray. We can all pray. Prayer moves mountains. If you, I, when Ben and I were going overseas full time, 
we would, people would say, oh, we can only pray for you. We can't give you a check right now. I'm like, you know what? That, there is no only about that. God is perfectly capable of touching someone's heart and we getting a, one $5,000 check that covers everything that we need as long as you have 50, we used to call them our little old ladies, <laughs> who would pray. They were always the ones that came to us and said, we're praying for you. And that means so much. That is something that we can do. It doesn't cost us out of our budget. It doesn't cost us. It costs our time. And that's the most valuable thing that we can give to somebody. We, at the um, conference we went to last year uh, with Link, um, there was a, a guy that spoke, um, uh, your mentor pastor in Houston, um, and he had this term globally. So global local, locally. And it's just such a cool concept of how you can wrap your brain around being involved. You know, we're not like out in the middle of Hick Town, wherever. <laughs> we have opportunities to reach out to those around us. So every month, I'm going to be sharing back and forth between a local, I mean, a person, a missionary person that our church is involved with in some form or fashion, um, and then an organization. And they're going to also be switched back and forth between local organizations that you can go actually volunteer with, and then organizations that's more like mission education, about these are different types of mission outreaches that are out there. And the back wall is going to be our mission board. So there's going to be uh, every month something's going to change, but the information will be up there for two months. So you'll have eight weeks to go back there and read it. <laughs> eight weeks to go back there and say, oh, yeah, who are we praying for again? Let me read the prayer request. Let me see what's going on. And then we um, can be involved in that way and just see what God does. God does amazing things when his people get together. You guys think, Stacy? So I just want to also highlight just the area of discipleship that we are uh, beginning to implement. And um, I'm going to speak a little bit more about that. What does that look like in 2019? But part of the discipleship process that has begun is our partnership with uh, Timothy Initiative. It's called TTI. And it is just, um, it's a, a resource, it's a tool, it's a group of people relationally that I have in my life that are holding me accountable to making sure that I'm leading my house, leading my family, leading my kids, and leading my church in the area of discipleship on what it means to actually make disciples that makes disciples. And so that partnership through the Spirit of God um, brought us together, a group of men together, to be having those conversations and to be holding each other accountable. So that actually happened. That was an answer of prayer uh, to God. And um, so what has that done? Um, currently right now at the alley, we have eight disciple makers. In other words, they are intentionally sharing the gospel and they are intentionally walking alongside other people and helping them to form their lives around Jesus as Lord. And so there is a formation that's happening. So we have eight disciple makers right now, 10 are, are in the oven right now, okay? So we started a, a discipleship training center in January, and we already have, we have 18 people uh, in that room right now who are being trained to be disciple makers. And so that is, um, oh, you can keep, go, go back, go back, please. Um, and right now at the alley, um, we have 32 people in a discipleship process that is relational and intentional, 32 people. So eight disciple makers and 32 disciples in the process in one year. That's, that's pretty good. So that, you can go to the next slide. So um, we also had our leaders go and our staff go to a discipleship conference, um, which just helped reinforce. And let me tell you why this was so beautiful. This, this, like this paid for the ticket right here. When you get into a room and you realize you aren't the only fool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You realize you're not the only ones who are talking and engaging in conversation that the outcome of every church should be disciples. And that God's mission, the Great Commission, 
is the heartbeat of the mission of the church. And I'm telling you, this paid for the ticket for us. Get into a space where there are people who are having that conversation and learning and learning from each other on how to do that. So we did that with our staff and, our, and some of our leaders. We also uh, went to a, a vertical church um, conference that uh, a lot of what we're talking, the language we're talking now about vertical and the alignment with our staff and our board and elders. We had our uh, board elders and staff read some resources together, and we've been in conversations about it for months, for months, on what does it mean for the church to start with the glory of God, just to be about the glory of God. And so we've, we, we were able to do that, um, and we're still in the process of doing it. And those two ideas, the discipleship and the vertical uh, value, is really what's going to drive us in, in 2019. And so what I want to do is I want to share with you um, just kind of the highest level, and then I want to show you some implementation that we're looking at doing in 2019. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited about where the Lord's leading us. I really am. And so here's uh, part of the vision for 2019. So let's look at um, the highest level. And that is, you've heard this. I've been saying it. Uh, it's been happening in our leadership. But if you can go to the next slide, here's, here's where we're landing. At 30,000 feet, the highest level, God's mission is his glory. It's his name. It's his fame. It's his purposes. It's his agenda. Everything, at the end of the day, God is for God. Okay? And so that's the highest mission that, that we see, is that God's glory. Okay? Revelation, every, every uh, nation, every tongue, every tribe, bowing, right, to the name of Jesus. It's his glory, okay? The Big C Church's mission, as we talked in our, in our staff, board, and elders, we believe that the, the, the Big C Church's mission is making disciples of all nations. That's the Great Commission, okay? Matthew 28 is not the only place that the Great Commission is given. It's all, the call to Abraham was a Great Commission call. The stars in the sky the grains of sand, so will be your descendants. That's a great commission text. And so we believe that the highest level, God's glory is, what's, is, what's, is what is most important, and that the Big C Church's mission is then to make disciples. So where do we fit into that? The Alley Church's mission is glorifying God by making disciples of all nations. Glorifying God by making disciples of all nations. Now we ask, well, how do we do that? And this is where the next slide comes in, okay? Um, what, we, what we talked about in, in some of our gatherings was, how do we know we're making disciples at the alley? Like, how do we know? What's, what's a litmus test for us to say we're actually holistically, as a church, making disciples? And so we spent some time as, uh, in our joint meetings with the board and the staff and the elders and we began to talk about what are some ways, what are some things that we can holistically look at as a framework that we can say, by the Spirit's power, to the best of our ability, this is how we're making disciples at the alley. And so we put some language to some of these areas. And the first one is we believe that worship is the fuel to discipleship. We believe that worship with praying, all those elements, that's the fuel that actually strengthens a disciple. And so the first area that we believe is that our worship. And so some of the things about, our, about what that means. So our weekend worship, when we're gathering here, that's fuel to making disciples. When we do our elder-led prayer gatherings, that's fuel for how we make disciples. Make disciples. We're also looking at implementing in 2019 uh, a process where we can do this linearly where we want to have some core classes. Now, it, it really is old school uh, Bible study or old school Sunday school is what it is. But I didn't really want to use that term, okay? Um, but they're basically spaces where people can dig in a little bit more and learn things like how do you read the Bible? What's the overview of the Bible? Um, how do you study the Bible? And so we want to put together, and by God's grace, as we were praying about this, we had two individuals in the alley who said the Lord was leading them to actually champion that. And so as we're talking about that, God's already putting people together to make that happen. 
And so we would like to implement in 2019 some kind of process where we are learning together um, some, some things, some fundamental things together. Um, uh, another thing um, is uh, we believe our next generation ministries, all that we're doing with Alley Kids and Alley Teens, we believe that that's how we're making disciples. So it gives us a space to say, you know what? We start with worship. Worship is the fuel. It's where we're putting logs on the fire for how we make disciples. The second area is how we walk together. We believe that's the context for how disciples are made. So we worship, but we also walk together. And how do we do that? We do that in home groups. We do that in our discipleship groups. We do that with our recovery groups. We do that with women's and men's ministry. And then, of course, we do it with our next generation um, ministries. So there's a context for we're worshiping, but there has to be a space where we're actually walking together. Now, that's been true, okay? That's been true. But the question is this. How does somebody who's coming to our worship, how do they get relationally connected to somebody? How do they do that? And so we thought, we need to have that conversation. We need to talk about how does somebody intentionally actually get engaged in a relationship. And so I'm, I'm actually meeting with some, some men right now, that uh, about four men. And here's what one of the guys told me. Ben, I was low-hanging fruit. All you had to do was bump me, and I would fall off the tree. Right? And so, but there was no process where he was able to take a step or somebody take a step towards him. And so we want to make sure we get very, very intentional about that. So these are the things that we think. These aren't the only things, but these are the things that we're trying to say this is the best way that we can do it. And, and here's the alley way, which is what our membership class is. We believe that our membership class is a space where somebody can go just from worship and learn how to be in a relationship with somebody. And that they're, that's one step for us. And here's what we're going to change about our membership uh, class just in case you're thinking about taking it. Um, there will be a next step after the membership class. We will challenge you to take a next step after the membership class. It won't just be sign this piece of paper. It's going to be, we're going we're gonna to give you ways and we're going to challenge you, where is God leading you? What step is God taking you? Where is God asking you to serve? Where is God, what group is God asking you to move into? Is God asking you to start a group? Is God asking you to start discipling somebody? What can we help you do so that it's not just a piece of paper that got signed, but there's an actual step? And so we want to help make that happen. Another thing we're, we're doing is our first look lunch. It used to be our community meal, but we want to shift that as we still invite the community, as the Alley family is still invited as well. We'd like to use that space to actually start sharing stories on how God's moving. Do you know we have a guy in our church who was dead and God brought him back to life? Not like spiritually, like that happened already, physically. Like that's a miracle, man. So like we need to be sharing those stories together. Um, so we're going to be doing that. We're also going to be highlighting some of our ministries here and giving some of our ministry leaders a space to talk about their ministries and how to get uh, plugged in. And we're going to eat together. Don't worry. We're not going to take the food away, okay? But we just want to use that space intentionally so that people can figure out, how do I go from where I'm at and I can take a step, okay? So that's what we're doing there. So um, we walk together. Um, some of these things are, um, they're not implemented yet, but we're praying about how they get implemented in 2019. The, the fourth area is this, is work. So worship, walk, and then work. Work is the overflow of discipleship. Okay, how we're serving, not just in our homes, not just in our marriages, not just with our kids, but how are we serving in our community? How are we serving in this family? And so we need a space for a way for us to do that and to talk about it. Okay, so we, uh, we also um, uh, want to talk about the last one, which is witness. And this is the result of uh, discipleship. You notice how they're all W's? Okay, that's so it's easy. Okay. So worship, walk, work, and witness. Okay, witness is missionary. Witness is disciple makers. Witnessing is how we're planting churches. Okay, 
And so that's the result of discipleship. So when we look at our church, when we look at how we're discipling the entire church, it doesn't mean that all of these things actually happen at one time. It just means there's a framework for us to be able to say, here's how we're discipling together the Alley Church. We worship, we walk together, we work together, and we witness together. Okay, now here's the best way that I can say this. When my son is 10 years old, is Cross 10? Okay, I just want to make sure, man. I think this is being recorded, so I don't want him to come back to me after he has to get counseling. Um, So um, this is the best way I can put this, guys. Um, My son's 10 years old. When he is 30 years old, if he treasures God above everything else, and he worships with his entire life, And he's walking with some people who are helping him grow in his faith and grow in his walk with Jesus. And he's using his gifts to serve not just his community, but he's using his gifts to serve his family and his church. And he is speaking the gospel. He knows how to share the gospel. He knows how to walk alongside people when they come to faith. I'm telling you this. If he's at 30 years old and he can do that, that's a disciple. That's a disciple right there. He has been discipled. Somebody has discipled him in order to be a disciple. And so that's, that's my, I mean, isn't that our hope? Isn't that our, we don't, we're not just looking for church attenders. We're looking for disciples and disciple makers, right? So I, that's the best way I can put it. When my son is older, he's 30, I pray that, I pray that's what his life looks like. I pray that's what his life looks like. So some of these elements aren't going to happen until 2019. Um, if you would like to figure out how to help us do that in some areas, my email is church. okay? We have elders. We have staff. We would love for you to help us. We're not going to do that by ourselves. We've got to do it together. But at least we have a framework for how we are saying we're going to make disciples. So next slide. We read it this morning. Let's read it together. Let God himself be the main attraction at church again, and let us be tireless in our insistence that church is for God, about God, through God, and to the glory of God. And so I'm not going to go through the vertical values because we're going through a series right now, but I would like to give you this, say this last thing. If you can go to the last slide, or the second to the last slide. After the vibe, there you go. You can sum it up right here, glorifying God through the fulfillment of the Great Commission. That's, that's what we're here for. We're here to bring God glory through the fulfillment of the Great Commission, making disciples that make disciples. And so I just wanted to share, and if you have any questions on that, um, any thoughts on that, um, I just want to give us a few minutes just to, if you have any questions. He's old enough. I got a lot of things to remember, man. That should probably be on the top, but. Please, if you have a question, it's, I mean, again, to the best of our ability, um, some of those things will change on how we implement them, um, but to the best of our ability, we want to be able to answer when somebody comes to us and they ask us, what is your church all about? We want to glorify God by making disciples that make disciples that make disciples. Any questions? Um, I don't know if it's my, who's up next? Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Thank you. I forgot about this slide. So these are some uh, celebrations from our Alley teens that, uh, that Dan Eglum shared with us, okay? Alley teens mission trip to Kansas City. I got to go on that. That was unreal. That was absolutely unreal. Um, and I'm telling you, there is something special about our Alley teens leaders and our students here. And you don't get that. You don't understand that, okay? And, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to talk about bad about nobody, but you don't get that till you get around some other youth groups. 
And, and you realize, man, what's happening here with our students and our leaders is unreal. Okay? Glory to God. All sports and activities camp uh, hosted by UW sports ministry team uh, had some decisions for Christ. Um, also, Affirmation 2018, Alley Teen students went deep in their faith and shared their testimonies with their peers. Uh, first communion, a few, few of our Alley kids took communion for the very first time. A great celebration with their families and church body. So was there one slide? Was that it? Just, okay. So let's thank God for what's happening. So. Thank you, Pastor Ben and Pastor Carl and Stacy and Dan. Um, it's good to celebrate what God has done and good to look forward. Um, that concludes our formal agenda for today. I'll give one pause if there's any questions, comments, discussion in the back. David? Speak loud, David. Speak loud. Speak loud. Thank you. Clearly, we needed a slide on the coffee details. <laughs> we'll, we'll note that for future meetings. Yeah. Dave.
I, I think that's actually a key point. As the board looked at that expense structure shift, um, one thing we did not do was want to ask more for less. So our cutting back on hours and dollars was not us asking the staff to do more with less, but asking and praying that God would provide through the renewal of the energy of our church family to support those things. Um, so I think that's really important, and that's something we'll continue to monitor as a board and check in with the staff on as well. Because it's important for us that they are healthy and well-balanced and being fed also. Last call, comments or questions? My new strategy is Jeremy, delegating to Jeremy. <laughs> is, is there a volunteer who'd be willing to close us in prayer this morning? <laughs>